Hello. Today we're going to make um, meatloaf, mashed potatoes, and green beans. Everybody has a meatloaf recipe. Um, this is a very basic recipe that you can uh, amend however you'd like. But I'd like to share with you how I make my meatloaf because I have found that it really lends itself well to people who are like, Ugh, meatloaf. Uh, they tend to really like it. So I actually start with uh, a pound each of ground pork and 80-20 uh, ground beef. So if uh, you can get something that has higher fat or lower fat, I should say, but 80-20, uh, that ratio of um, lean to fat really gives it a great mouth feel uh, and it keeps it from drying out. Uh, nothing worse than a dry piece of meatloaf. So what do I include? Um, you're gonna see a little bit of uh, red pepper, a little bit of parsley, uh, salt and pepper to taste. There's gonna be uh, a little olive oil and a little bit of balsamic vinegar going on here. Um, breadcrumbs, uh, you can use panko. I'm using gluten-free uh, breadcrumbs. We've got uh, tomatoes, which I think you're gonna find interesting how we manage those. We have one egg as our binder. We have a third of a cup of water to help with the moisture content. And if you've watched any of my videos, uh, garlic. <laughs> garlic adds flavor to everything. So the basics for making any kind of meat ball, uh, and what is a meatloaf but a very large meat ball. We're gonna make them individual, but it's the same idea. You want to have something wet, so we've got our water. We've got our egg. Make sure you get all that goodness out of there. The, the hen worked hard to make that happen. You're gonna whisk those two together just to break up the egg. Doesn't have to be super fancy. Okay, we're gonna put in about half a cup of um, breadcrumbs or panko, whatever, whatever you have on hand. And if you use seasoned breadcrumbs, that's fine. Just keep in mind that these are unseasoned and that's why you'll see the amounts of seasoning that I choose to put in might be different than yours. So make sure you adjust accordingly. So I'm gonna put about a half a cup. It's okay if you go over. It's okay if you go slightly under. The breadcrumbs are gonna act as a, a way to help retain some of the moisture because we're putting them in our in our mixture here in our pan and they're uh, helping uh, be a filler uh, and a binder so they, they serve multiple purposes but anytime you're starting to make something that uh, means getting meat together like this you want to get all your wet ingredients with your before you get your meat put in here so I'm gonna go ahead and add in my garlic, I'm using two cloves per pound. So if you adjust the recipe on your own, just keep that in mind. You can use as little as one, you don't have to put any, but it's not going to be spicy with this amount. This just adds a really nice background note. So let's get the last one in here. I'm using our, our press, I'm gonna use my whisk to just clean that off and get the rest of those pieces of garlic in there. Okay, mix that up, and I'm gonna add a pinch of crushed red pepper. I do not like spicy food, uh, but I have found that by putting just a little pinch in here, you can see that's not a lot, uh, it adds a nice flavor uh, overall. It keeps it from being one note. You've probably heard people describe food as one note. Um, now I'm going to add parsley. I happen to have a lot of dried parsley on hand right now. Uh, I transfer it into this little container because it's easy to, to use. But you can use fresh parsley. If you use fresh parsley, you want to chop it up so it's fine like this. And you want about half a bunch of parsley. Uh, fresh is, it doesn't pack the punch of dry. Well, you use a lot less dry ingredients uh, when it comes to herbs simply because this flavor is concentrated. So I've probably put in a good two teaspoons, excuse me, tablespoons 
two tablespoons of uh, parsley. Now, I'm going to add my salt and pepper. And I, I kind of do this by eye because I know how much meat I have. But you figure you're going to use this to taste. Uh, I'm going to turn my pepper grinder about five or six times. Well, maybe 10 times. Because I already have the pepper flakes in there, remember. Now, if you like it spicier, go ahead and add more. And um, with the salt, in this case, I'm probably using about, um, about a teaspoon of salt overall. Uh, you can add more. Remember, everything is to your taste, how you like to uh, have it taste. So I'm gonna mix that up. Doesn't that look like seasoned breadcrumbs already? Wet seasoned breadcrumbs? Let's get everything out of our whisk. That's the fun part about whisks. And now we're going to add our meat. So remember, we've got a pound each of ground pork. And I'm just going to put that in here. And we are going to get uh, a pound of 80-20. And that's the lean to fat ratio of ground beef. Open this one up. I find if you open it on, on two sides here and there, uh, you can just get everything out really quickly. You don't have to take the whole thing apart. You just kind of invert the package. It comes right out. All right, so make sure your hands have been washed before you put your hands in here. I am going to put my hands in here and I'm just going to do it until combined. I'm not going to um, keep my hand in here so much that I, the, the meat is warm. <laughs> That's a good indicator. This has been in the fridge right up until I pressed record for this video. So this is cold. My eggs are cold. Everything's cold. But in the meantime, I have my oven preheating at 350. And now I'm scooping and turning, scooping and turning, because you want to get all of this worked into the meat so that you have a nice, even mixture. So this may take a moment or two, but just be patient. It'll come right together. It doesn't take long. Here we go. Almost there. So I find that if I make this, uh, and I have this already mixed. You saw how long that took to get combined. I can come back at the end of the day uh, after work, make my little meat pies that I'm gonna make now out of this for my meatloafs, and I'm ready to go. So, there you go. That's two pounds of meat combined. So what we're gonna do now, I've got a sheet pan here and I have a rack on top of it. The rack is so that the juices can flow down, anything that comes out of the meatloaf can flow down and the meatloaf isn't sitting inside of it. It kind of gets a little soggy if you do that. Uh, it's your preference, whatever you'd like to do. And what I start with is a good handful and I'm just, I'm not done forming these. This is just for portions. So it's, it's my handful. Your handful might be a little bit different but you want these big enough to basically be one serving. I usually can get about six, six or so out of this, depending on how, how I form them up. Okay, and this is one serving per person. Could you make them smaller? Sure. Um, but think about how big a portion is when you're making this for your family. Oops, and keep that in mind. All right, so we're going to use our hand. We're just gonna kind of make it into a meatball, okay? And then I'm going to elongate it. So I have everything in fairly the same shape. And the reason we do that is for even cooking, okay? So let's get everybody 
you know, the other six of these in the same shape. And I'm just using my hands to do this. Perfection is not what we're after here. We want, you know, things as close as possible. But you're, you're turning it, you know, I'm turning my hands just so I can get everything pushed together. And then I'm flattening it out a little bit in my palm and kind of squaring it off. So I've got these little rectangles per person. That would probably end up being like a slice and a half, maybe two slices, depending on how thick you slice your, your whole loaf of meat when you do a whole meatloaf. So these are nice individual portions. I like to make them for dinner and for lunch. They're great for leftovers because you don't have to cut anything uh, when you take it to work. So that's always nice. All right, so here we are. One more after this. Nice and evenly shaped like everybody else or as close as possible. Last one. This one's this one's a little bit hefty. I can feel it in my hand, but that's okay. It's not so much that it's not going to be cooked through when everybody, all the others are ready. But if you find that you want to take a piece off, pinch it off and marry it into another piece. Now, before you go and clean your hands to do the next step, you want to take your fingers and make an indentation here. It, mine are kind of fairly deep. And I do that across the top of all of them. You might have to reshape a little when you're done. So I've got this little well at the top. Make sure you do that for each and every one of them. Okay, almost done. Those are looking good. Nice little well. All right, so at this point, you need to stop and wash your hands, which is what I'm gonna go and do. Okay, now that we have uh, clean hands, uh, we're gonna move our meatloafs, our individual meatloafs off to the side, and we're gonna prepare our topping. Now you can certainly put um, tomato sauce or ketchup or whatever you like. I like to put fresh tomatoes. So I'm gonna take these, these are Campari tomatoes. They actually taste of tomato. They don't taste like water. You wanna use a tomato that actually has tomato flavor. And because these are so tender, I actually just leave the, the top on. And using a serrated knife, unless you have a very sharp knife, you're going to cut these, each one, nice and thin. And we're gonna to top our meatloaf with them. All right, so there's gonna be one for each. And just make sure you've cleaned your tomatoes. Make sure you're cutting all the way through. And just be safe. Not everybody's comfortable cutting a tomato. Round objects are something that you need to be very aware of when you're using a knife. But a good sharp blade will do the job. All right, so that's three. And I know you're gonna say, but Roxanne, you have six of them there. You'll see because of the size, I believe I have enough here. If I don't, I'll just grab another tomato to finish it off. All right, last one. Okay, so I'm going to move my tomatoes just off to the side here. I'm going to bring back my individual meatloafs. And now I'm going to take my tomato and I flip the bottom one and then I literally just lay out the tomato. I happen to have a spare piece, so that's gonna be the friend here. And you see how it's just sitting in my little well there? They're not gonna fall off. Uh, that's actually one of the, the concerns you might have if you leave it without putting your little well together. Oh, I didn't cut this one all the way through. 
it's okay. There we go. All right, so that, that little end one is going on this one. And I have plenty of tomato on this one. So we're gonna move these two pieces over here. There we go. So you can see it, it looks really nice. You get that little bit of tomato flavor. Like I said, you can certainly add more if that's what you would like. You can add a um, tomato sauce if you'd like to make that or, or ketchup. I know people love ketchup with, with this. And that is the basics of it. So I actually add some aged balsamic vinegar on top. I'm rather generous with it. And because I have my little well underneath my tomatoes, a lot of it does stay there. A lot of it does go on the bottom. Add a little drizzle of olive oil. And I say very little per. And the reason I do this is um, personal preference. Uh, but, but fat adds flavor. And then because I have tomatoes at the top, I've put my um, salt dispenser on a shaker. And I'm just going to put a little bit of salt across the top because we want to get those tomatoes seasoned. Very, very little. You can add some pepper if you'd like. This has plenty of pepper for my taste. So now we're going to just take it and put this in the oven. So here we go. Remember, our oven is set to um, 350. Okay, oven's ready to go. And they'll take about um, 20 to 25 minutes tops. So close your oven, don't let all the heat out like I'm doing right now, and then set your timer. So with our meatloaf, we're going to have mashed potatoes. Um, I use Yukon Gold uh, potatoes. They have a very thin skin, uh, a lot of nutrition in all of the potato skins. Uh, and I don't actually peel them. I've washed the potatoes. Um, they're dry because I did that earlier. Uh, and all I'm going to do now is, um, as I cut them into similar size pieces, I am going to put them into my pot. We're going to add water, a generous amount of salt. And the reason we do that is because the salt uh, is able to get into the food while it's boiling. So we want to make sure that, that, that it gets in there. Um, so first I'm going to cut the potato lengthwise so I get a flat surface. Flat surfaces are our friend when we cook. Now things don't roll around. So holding my knife, using my knuckles, I'm going to cut. And you see how they kind of stick? <laughs> I mean, I could shake them off, of course, but I actually use that as my guide for my next potato. Uh, and I don't worry if, if something falls off because I, I have an idea of how big I want them to be. So now I've got evenly sized pieces across the board. Again, even sized pieces means even cooking. Even cooking means you're going to have everything ready at the same time. So flat surface. We'll trim these guys down as well. And get them into our pot. Okay, so we're ready to get our potatoes going. Uh, I'm gonna turn on the fan, which is gonna be a little loud. Uh, turn on my heat to about, uh, just about medium on mine. And I'm going to add in the water. I'm making a little bit of a mess there. You want enough water to cover the potatoes, no more. And when I say a generous amount of salt, I mean a generous amount of salt. You want salty water just like when you make pasta. Okay, this is not going to make the potato salty, but it's going to have just enough because it's going to um, be diluted by the water. So the salty water 
helps the potatoes get whatever flavor the potato on its own without the butter uh, or other additives that you'll, you'll put in, additions that you'll put into your mashed potatoes are going to add. So we're gonna let this come to a boil. Uh, and the fastest way to do that is to cover your pot. Keep an eye on it. A watch pot never boils. Well, believe it or not, it still does. Uh, so make sure that you keep an eye on that. As soon as it comes to a boil, you're going to take the top off. And as soon as they are fork tender, they're ready to go. This shouldn't take us no more than about 15, 20 minutes, depending on how hot, um, how quickly your stove can get the temperature up and get this boiling. So the meatloaf has gone in and it's ready uh, almost at the same time as the potatoes will be ready. And after the meatloaf is uh, finished cooking, we need it to rest so that the juices inside will redistribute. So by doing this and having our potatoes going at the same time, everything's going to be ready for us to eat all at once. Okay, here we go. So last but not least in our preparation, we're going to get our green beans ready. Uh, these are uh, thin green beans, they're called adico vert. Um, they're rather tender, but you can use any kind of green beans. I've already washed these, um, so I'm just putting them here on my cutting board. I'm going to see if I need to trim anything off. Sometimes the ends need a little bit of trimming. And I'm just going to go through these real quick. So like this one, uh, we could probably not use that one. It's probably seen better days. Okay, little pieces like this we're not going to use. Well, these were really well provided, so I'm going to trim that little piece off. It's really fibrous. That's where it connected to the plant. The rest of this all really looks good. So I've just got those in a bowl off to the side. I'm going to use garlic. <laughs> um, as my main flavor component. Uh, so I'm going to get that chopped up with the little chopper here. There we go. My garlic press. We like garlic. So there's a lot of garlic here. That's going to be its main flavor component. Uh, but the, the piece that you may not know is um, I'm going to use the lemon but I'm gonna use two parts of the lemon. I'm gonna use the zest from the outside and I'm gonna use some lemon juice. And that's going to add a, a, a brightness to our, our green beans so they're not just garlic, which is delicious, but come on, you can only have so much of that. So I've got a couple of little bowls here to, to try and capture my stuff. Um, the zest of the lemon has all the essential oil in it. So it's it smells, when you think of a lemon, if you go to the store and you just, you know, scratch a lemon and smell it, that's the oils in the skin. So when you wash your lemon, when you bring them home, don't be too vigorous about it. Just, you'll wash away all that lovely, beautiful, um, flavor. That's the zest. I'm just going to use my clean finger to get that up and put it in my bowl so it doesn't fall on my cutting board only. And that's that's actually plenty for what I'm going to do. So we'll move that to the side. And um, you know I could use the rest of, I could um, zest the rest of this lemon but I've got, I've got a lot of lemons right now so I'm not worried about having enough. I'm going to cut this lemon in half And using my reamer, I'm going to get um, lemon juice out. I also got a couple of seeds in there, some pits. It's not a problem. We'll just get a fork, we'll get those out, no worries. But you'll notice I'm keeping everything else in there. All right, so that's the prep for our green beans. We're not going to put them on until the, frankly, the uh, potatoes are done <laughs> uh, because they don't take very long at all. I like them crispy um, so they have a snap 
so these aren't going to saute for much longer than about five minutes. Let's check in on our meatloaf. Our individual meatloafs look like they're ready. 20, these were in for 25 minutes. Uh, so I'm gonna turn off the oven. I'm gonna take, take them out and I'm gonna loosely tent them so they stay warm. And um, while we are finishing off and uh, preparing our mashed potatoes. Okay, so our potatoes have been um, boiling. You can see they're at a, a rapid boil. And you know this is what's uh, called a rapid boil because there is no break in the bubbles. There are constant, constant bubbles being generated. So that's a, a rapid boil. And I'm trying to pierce the potatoes and I, I can hardly pierce them uh, because they are falling apart. They're actually ready to go. So fork tender, they're going right through. So now we're going to drain the water and then we're going to start getting them into what's called the ricer, which I'll introduce you to in just a second. Okay, so I have uh, drained the potatoes of water, but now what we're doing is we're drying them out. I'm letting the, I have the pot on with the heat and I'm going to dry them out just a little bit so that when we do put them in um, with our butter and our nutmeg and a, you know, salt to taste, I'm not going to have uh, that overly waterlogged potato that will end up tasting like water. <laughs> and water, don't get me wrong, is great, but we want to accentuate the flavor of the butter and the potato and the nutmeg now, and the water would dilute that. So I'm going to use what's called a ricer. The way this thing works is it's got a long handle and I just gonna open it up. I'm gonna put the potatoes inside, pull the handle down. Potatoes are gonna come out of all of these perforations. Occasionally, I'm going to scrape that down. And at the bottom of my bowl, I'm going to have my butter. Uh, so similar to some other things that I have made, we're using a half a stick of butter. You can use less but this is the only thing I am adding by way of fat to my potatoes. I am not adding milk. You're welcome to do so if you'd like. Um, at the end, I'm going to finish it off with nutmeg. So nutmeg is exactly what it sounds like. It's a nut and it's very fragrant. Um, we are going to use the microplane and we're going to, you'll be able to see right here on the inside you can see the nut itself. Isn't that cool? So we're going to just um, use nutmeg as our flavor, our added flavor. Uh, you can use whatever you'd like. You can add cheese if you'd like. Um, I want to keep the potatoes fairly simple today um, and just use uh, nutmeg. And if you have never tried nutmeg, if you already have ground nutmeg, that's fine. Um, but I will tell you that I have had these for these nutmeg for quite some time and I use each piece till they're like little teeny tiny nubs. Uh, then they end up going into, um, you know, like a potpourri uh, during the winter time. Um, but this stays fresh as opposed to something that's already ground. So if you can find them whole, I suggest that you do it. Uh, and you can see they don't weigh much at all. Um, I've had this for quite some time now. Okay, so we're going to take our potatoes out. They're dried out. Um, that took about, you know, three or four minutes. Uh, and we're going to use, I personally like using the ricer. I like smooth potatoes. If you don't have a ricer, uh, you can get a masher and you can use your masher. Um, just don't overdo it because you'll start to get something really gummy. Uh, if you like your potatoes to have lumps in them um, and have that texture, uh, then just, you know, mash them just a little bit. Uh, or you can do what I did when I was little, mash them by, with a fork. Uh, so it really just comes down to what you have available. I happen to like the ricer itself. So I'm going to use my spider uh, to get my potatoes out. It's a, it gets just enough out for me each time. I'm just going to move this here. 
I don't want to cause a problem. I'm going to put my potatoes in. Let's move this here so you can see. And then I just pull the lever back. You can see the potato will squirt everywhere if you take it out of the bowl. Uh, but here's the fun part. Remember I never peeled the potatoes? All of those skins come right off. I don't have to worry about them if I don't want them in my finished product. So I'm going to do this uh, until I get all the potatoes through the ricer. It, it goes fairly quickly. I just don't have, I don't have a large grip. So I have to do it slowly each time. And I have my butter at the bottom already so that the butter starts to melt from the heat of the potatoes. Now, if your food is not ready, but your potatoes are and you get them all done, all we're gonna do is uh, mix this up with our butter that's already at the bottom of the bowl. And then we'll cover it with plastic wrap and it'll stay warm as long as you keep it out of a draft. All right, so we're going to keep doing that until all the potatoes are through the ricer. So now that we've got all of our potato in here, we're going to put some of the nutmeg in because we don't want to stir this more than we have to. That will give us the opportunity to get gummy. So be really careful. This is a small item. Uh, I'm just going to use the rasp microplane. You can see it's taking the nut off and it's really finely ground. I'll show you in just a second. You don't need uh, a lot of this. Like I said, be really careful with your fingers. You can see that was, that was rounded there. I do that to get anything that might've been stuck on the bottom out. And now using a spatula, I'm gonna go from the outside through the middle and stir this a few times because I've got my butter at the bottom. I wanna make sure I get all the potato together and get the nutmeg incorporated. Super smooth. And if you like a lot of extra butter, can always put a dollop of butter right before service right onto your little mound of potato okay so there we have it potatoes are ready to go now you do want to taste that and make sure that there's um, enough salt and there's plenty of salt in there for me um, but Remember, if you do want to add, add a little, stir it in, taste it. That way you can make sure it's ready and not over salted. All right, so this is ready to go. Okay, so everything's ready. We're going to start plating up our food. Uh, we can be artsy about it uh, or we can be, you know, plain. It's really up to you. I'm going to be a little artsy about it. Really generous portion of potato. And then I'm going to put my meatloaf. I've got to hold on to this so you can pick it up. There's your meatloaf. And we've cooked up our, our string beans. So we're going to put those around. These are our garlic, our lemony garlic string beans. I'm going to put a few here and there. Remember, you eat with your all, all five senses. So I hope you enjoy what we've made today. We're gonna finish this off with a little bit of that lemon zest right on top of our green beans. And there you have it. Uh, meatloaf with butter um, mashed potatoes and garlic lemon green beans. I hope you enjoy.